Four days ago, President Trump signed the second largest rescue package in American history. The largest one was the CARES Act back in March. Due to this pandemic and our massive response, we now have a national debt far larger than our entire economy for the first time since World War II. But we knew our people needed more help, so Congress just passed another nearly $900 billion in emergency relief targeted to those who need it most. A second round of payroll support to save small business jobs, more unemployment aid, vaccine distribution money, funding for safe schools, and much more. In addition to historic amounts of targeted help at the request of President Trump and his team, the package also included another round of direct checks to households. Whether or not each household needs the help, whether or not their finances have changed dramatically this past year. Yesterday, Secretary Mnuchin announced households should begin receiving these payments as early as today and this week. That is more good news to a lot of people. After Congress and the administration finalized the bipartisan bill, the president expressed interest in further expanding non-targeted direct payments. So to ensure the president was comfortable signing the bill into law, the Senate committed to beginning one process that would combine three of the president's priorities, larger direct checks, a repeal of Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, and further efforts to review the integrity of our democracy. Three of the president's priorities in one Senate process. That was the commitment, and that's what happened yesterday when I introduced text reflecting just what the president had, in fact, requested. Now, Mr. President, House and Senate Democrats want something very different. As they tried to do countless times in the past four years, Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer are trying to pull a fast one on the president and the American people. First of all, they're hoping everyone just forgets about election integrity and big tech. They're desperate to ignore those two parts of President Re Trump's request, and you can draw your own conclusions. And even on the question of larger checks, the Democrats have tried to warp what President Trump actually laid out. Look, it's no secret that Republicans have a diversity of views about the wisdom of borrowing hundreds of billions more to send out more non-targeted money, including to many households that have suffered no loss of income during the crisis. COVID-19 has not affected all households equally, not even close. It's hardly clear that the federal government's top priority should be sending thousands of dollars to, for example, a childless couple making well into six figures who've been comfortably teleworking all year. Our duty is to help get help to the people who actually need help, like we did to a historic degree just four days ago. But above and beyond that discussion, the Democratic leaders have broken from what President Trump proposed. They quietly changed this proposal in an attempt to let wealthy households suck up even more money. Speaker Pelosi structured her bill so that a family of four would have to earn more than $300,000 in order not, not to qualify for more cash. A family of three could pull in $250,000 per year a quarter of a million dollars and still qualify for some money. And Democratic leaders want to call this scheme, quote, survival checks. Only my friends, Speaker Pelosi and Democratic leader, could look at households in New York and California who make $300,000 in households where nobody has been laid off, where earnings did not even drop during the past year, and conclude these rich constituents of theirs need, quote, survival checks financed by taxpayer dollars and borrowed money. Everyone sees the game here. These are the same Democrats who proudly blocked the entire aid package for months because they tried to hold out for special tax cuts for rich people in blue states. Now they say it's a matter of survival to send another boatload of cash to people making $300,000 regardless of whether they've experienced any disruption at all this past year. Even the liberal Washington Post today is laughing at the political left for demanding more huge giveaways with no relationship to actual need. Here's what the Washington Post wrote. 
especially wrong-headed is the progressive left spearheaded by Senator Bernie Sanders, who depicts the $2,000 as aid to desperate Americans despite huge amounts destined for perfectly comfortable families. That's from the editors of the Washington Post. The Wall Street Journal, usually their opposite number, actually agrees. These non-targeted checks are unnecessary, and struggling households can access targeted support like expanded jobless benefits, food stamps, child care subsidies, and much more. The liberal economist Larry Summers, President Clinton's Treasury Secretary, and President Obama's NEC director says, quote, there's no good economic argument for universal 2000 checks, $2,000 checks at this moment. He points out the CARES Act and the brand new law will already have boosted overall household income relative to the economy back to its pre-pandemic levels, if not higher. If specific struggling households need still more help after the huge historic package that was just signed into law four days ago has taken effect, then what they will need is smart, smart targeted aid. Not another fire hose of borrowed money that encompasses other people who are doing just fine. So in my view, colleagues like Senator Cornyn and Senator Toomey have pointed this out persuasively. But more broadly, here's the deal. The Senate is not going to split apart the three issues that President Trump linked together just because Democrats are afraid to address two of them. The Senate's not going to be bullied into rushing out more borrowed money into the hands of Democrat rich friends who don't need the help. We just approved almost a trillion dollars in aid a few days ago. It struck a balance between broad support for all kinds of households and a lot more targeted relief for those who need help the most. We're going to stay smart, we're going to stay focused, and we're going to continue delivering on the needs for our nation. Now, Mr. President, I move to proceed to calendar number 480S3985.